Welcome to part two of designing with PlantWave, your guide to the PlantWave Pro app. So in the last episode, we talked about uh, PlantWave, uh, we talked about sonification and, and the history of the creation of PlantWave. Uh, and so this one, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about how PlantWave works and the data stream. And then along with some fundamental principles for design and, and kind of why the app is built the way it is. And then we're going to get into design approaches and actually playing with, uh, with the app. So there we have our plant wave and, uh, let's talk about how it works. So plant wave detects changes in impedance of a plant. So what that means is it's, it's sending a small amount of electricity through a plant. It's like uh, basically like two AA batteries, but it's, so it's like you couldn't really feel it. It's a very small amount of electricity. And in, in fact, it's been shown to be helpful for plants, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so we send this small amount of electricity through the plant, like through these two points. And we're measuring how much of that electricity gets through there. Uh, now, that varies over time because a plant is a living being. And so it's moving water around. It's moving water through its system. So this is a plant photosynthesize. It moves chloroplasts around. It uses water to do that. And so we're able to measure these micro fluctuations in the change in conductivity through the surface of a leaf, through a plant. And then we graph those over time and that is graphed as a wave. So if you think of like variation over time, that's, that makes a wave. So we translate that wave into pitch and then we route the pitch messages to different instruments. So the plant, the changes that are happening in the plant are graphed as a wave the wave is matched basically to like the nearest pitch. And then the pitch is used to control instruments. So every single note that you hear from a plant wave is a real time expression of a change happening in a plant. If there's no change in a plant, you won't hear any notes. If you get change, you'll hear more notes. If you're getting a little bit of change, it might just kind of like play one or two notes and be a little bit boring. Now, if we have ways around that, we'll talk about that later. Um, I mean, you can touch your plants, you can change sensitivity on the device. There are so many other things that, that we can do related to that. But that, that, those are the basics of how PlantWave works. And then, um, so just a little background, you, you don't have to know this, but the, this is the, the thing that we use to send the notes from the device, the plant wave device to the app, it's called MIDI. And so it's like, it's like a, it's a language for like synthesizers and, and things like that. So if you use synthesizers, it, you'll know about this and you can actually use the data from the plant wave to run into synthesizers. Uh, but, but if not, I mean, basically the, the basics of it are that, uh, it's able to send out up to like 128 notes. And then there are 128 possible uh, parameters for how those notes are expressed. So you could think of like one of them is like notes on a keyboard. The other is like a volume button or a volume knob or, or an effects knob or something like that. And so the notes are translations from the wave. And then we do more math, which is how quickly the wave changes or how much of a shift there is in the wave to uh, basically allow the system to change knobs, which can change a lot of different effects and change other things. And we're going to, we're going to get into that later, but that's just a little bit back, bit of background on that. That's, this is me just uh, writing there what I just said. So this is an example of the data from the plant. This is the MIDI and you can see, you can follow this and it's a, uh, it's pretty clear what that would sound like when we were listening earlier to Tobias, like what that sounds like when somebody sings this kind of wave, right? You, you can kind of familiarize yourself with that. And this is what it's like when you, uh, when you just have, when you have the wave right there and you're not 
necessarily compressing the amount of notes that are allowed to be expressed. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but there, there are ways, there are times you might want to have a, an instrument be within a single range, like maybe just an octave or two instead of being allowing the plant to play any note that it wants. And uh, in that case, your wave stops looking like a wave and it starts looking like a chevron. So instead of it going like this and all the way up here and down, it gets folded. So you have this here. So you'd have the notes would, would go from high to low to high and then would jump, boom, to low. And then you would hear it going up high. You'll also sometimes see, uh, you also sometimes hear with a plant wave, uh, you'll hear notes go from low to high and then it'll go low to high again. And that's when a plant is increasing conductivity like forever and it's continuing to go on and on and on. Um, so you'll hear uh, ascending, 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 or you'll hear descending, descending, descending. Those are other kinds of, uh, things, phenomena you can, you can witness with plants. Now with that, now with that, uh, you know, you might be asking, well, how would I know that the difference between if I heard this note here and then this note here, how would I know the difference between, how would I know that there was a jump there? Like if it went from here to, he if it went from here to like here right away, how would you know the difference? Well, we would know the difference because uh, a big shift like that would shift something else in the plant music it would shift something beyond just the note we can have that shift different effects and uh, and other things or even what instrument is represented there so like maybe this is a harp and then this which is this would be maybe a guitar um so that's an example of some of the things that we can do with the system again that's really complex we try our best to in every case, uh, we try our best to have, we have a, a bunch of sound sets that, that do th this only, but then we have other sound sets that do get like this. Um, and those are the ones that might sound a little bit more musical. And uh, yeah, that, and that's part of why that happens. So let's dive into the fundamental principles of design for plant wave. Um, yeah, we have to have an approach to creating music from data or else we're just going to be lost and floating. <laughs> uh, th the goal for this is really to, to have a system that allows a listener to have an understanding of what's happening in a plant and the, the amount of shifts that are happening in, in a plant or in any system. We have a lot of other plans for this kind of technology, which eventually will be a part of our lives, like working off wearables and other things for human music. Um, but yeah, we have some fundamental principles of design. So one of them is the value of harmony. Another is to provide the listener with multiple levels of resolution of the data. That might sound really technical. We'll get into it. Don't worry about it. Uh, then we differentiate the sounds uh, with different instruments. And then the control message thing, we'll get into that as well. But let's just start with harmony. Like why make plant, why, you know, if some people post in comments like, whoa, this sounds so harmonious. Like, why does it sound harmony? Why is it in a key? Like what, why, why is, is that just what it sounds like? Is that what a daffodil actually sounds like? And it's say, like, okay, well, let's step back. It's, it's a sonification, right? So. And in our design principles of sonification, we value harmony. And the biggest reason it's ergonomics. Um, it's about making this something that a human can receive, right? So it's really about the music or the sound being listenable and non-fatiguing. So plants are on their own time scale. Plants aren't here to perform for you. They're not here to perform music for you at, at, at your will. They are going about their lives doing their thing. And plant wave is here to allow us as humans to have a window into what they plants are doing. And so sometimes they're not doing that much, honestly, like sometimes they're, you know, you might 
get a plant that's only playing a couple notes and or maybe it, maybe a plant is really expressive and it's doing a lot and it's and it has a, a lot happening uh now over longer periods of time you might notice big shifts in those patterns you know maybe one minute it's playing just a few notes and then five minutes later it's got a lot more going on now our goal is to be able to hold space for humans to have that experience and so if it's grading if it's like out of key if it's discordant you're not going to spend as much time listening to the plant and you won't actually experience the shifts that are happening in plants so this is a, an ergonomic de decision because plants aren't just going to shift like have these huge shifts necessarily in the first 30 seconds or the first like three minutes that you're listening to them. This is really designed to allow us to tune into these shifts over a longer period of time on a plant's time scale. Uh, that's, that's what this is about. And another benefit of harmony is that it enhances openness. You know, people love sound baths or like ambient music or chill, chill out playlists. And part of the reason of that is that it helps to relax us and so why we choose pentatonic scales and things like that is that it helps to put us in this really nice uh receiving state an open state and when we're in that open state that enhances our ability to hear the changes that are happening in plants it actually makes us more present and more able to receive those shifts that are happening in the plants. So uh, not only is it just a better experience for us, but the experience itself opens us to receiving the information from that wonderful experience. So uh, that's why we value Harmony when we're designing with PlantWave. Next, uh, we provide the listener with multiple levels of resolution. If you think back to when Tobias was singing that graph, that was one instrument. It was Tobias's voice singing one graph, right? And uh, yeah, and what we're able to do is we're able to provide, uh, allow one plant to play multiple instruments at the same time. So you might have something that's more like Tobias's voice following that wave, but you might have something that, um, that is only allowed to be triggered, you know, every few seconds. So maybe you're getting a lower resolution of that picture of that wave. You're only getting a sample of it like every 10 seconds. So we, uh, so here you'll see this word, this big word arpeggiation. So arpeggiation is basically, uh, it just means when we are giving the plant a fixed amount of, uh, of notes, it's allowed to play in a given time. So we might, if we have a high arpeggiation rate, that means that the plant is able to play a lot of notes um really quickly so you'll get a very fine resolution of that wave and then if you have a low arpeggiation rate then that means that you would only be able to hear the data from that wave like once every x amount of seconds maybe 10 seconds uh so that that's a thing that we use uh to we have multiple instruments and each one might have a different arpeggiation rate so that's why it ends up sounding nice and musical. Uh, and there's usually one of the instruments that's the most literal translation of the data from the plant. And so with that, we like to differentiate those sounds uh, that are representing those different sample rates. So we usually use lower toned instruments for lower resolution things. So we might use bass for the thing that is only triggered uh, once every 10 seconds or so. And then we use higher tone instruments for things that are higher resolution and that play faster. So that way, yeah, you might have, if you think back to the, uh, if you think back to the space sonification, we had those like little twinkly things. Those were the, that was like the higher resolution and the higher 
uh, the higher kind of toned instrument playing the very high finely tuned resolution things to those little dots whereas you had the kind of lower uh stringed instrument cello violin playing the lower resolution uh gaseous space so uh, that's something that we like to do and then the next thing is that these control messages allow for more expression than the notes themselves and all that means is, you know, when we're following the wave and we get the notes, but then based on how quickly there's a shift, those uh, that can affect uh, other things. Uh, and when we looked at that kind of Chevron pattern, uh, so th that the notes don't always tell the whole story because sometimes the notes are wrapped. So we allow uh, other different instruments to be um, activated at different times based on how much of a shift there is in the plant. So you might hear the same note twice, but it might be played through different instruments and that tells you that there's a big shift in the plant. So that's an, another uh, concept for, uh, for how we're approaching design. So, yeah, design principles, again, we value harmony, provide the listener with multiple levels of resolution. We differentiate the sounds representing the different sample rates. So like different instruments for the different kind of resolution that we're representing. And then the control messages allow for a lot of expression. And so that brings us into approaches to design. So next, we're going to get into uh, these different ideas so we can design for audio monitoring of data so so that you have a very literal representation of the data and that allows you to, to to monitor it and know something about the system and then sometimes you might just want more of like that wind chime effect maybe you just want to design a sound set for musicality and you want to have it just feel nice and hold space throughout your day and be varying enough that it stays interesting, uh, but not necessarily be a literal expression of what's happening in the plant, but still being completely controlled by the plant and being true sonification. So, and then we can also play around with combining the approaches. So these, these are going to be the next three modules of your experience. Uh, so let's dive in to designing for audio monitoring of data.